ASEAN Korea Commemorative Summit, which will be delivered by President Moon Jae-in and Prime Minister of Thailand Prayut Chanocha in just a few minutes. Prime Minister Chan Ocha will speak on behalf of the other ASEAN members as the leader of this year's chair of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. But while we wait, await for the announcement, let's first connect with Adirang's Lee ji in Busan for the latest updates from the venue of the summit. See you and fill us in. Hey, Dan, as you can see behind me, the media center here at Bexco, venue for the 2019 ASEAN Korea Commemorative Summit, is bustling with reporters and media staff waiting for the joint statement that sums up the results of their discussions during the two day special summit. Now, after this, President Moon Jae will be sitting down with the leader of Myanmar to discuss bilateral relations. And after wrapping up that meeting, the president is going to meet with the leader of Laos. During these one on ones, the two sides will be discussing bilateral bilateral ties over the past three decades and map out a framework for cooperation going forward. Now, after these meetings, President Moon Jae-in will be hosting a welcoming dinner banquet for the first Mekong Korea summit set to be held tomorrow. That's all from me for now. Back to you, Dylan. Thank you, Jiyun, for that. Keep us posted as stories develop. The main sessions of the 2019 ASEAN Korea Commemorative Summit, which is the third of its kind to be held in South Korea, came to a close this afternoon by adopting the ASEAN Korea Joint Vision Statement. And like previous joint statements made, this year's vision statement includes detailed directions and ways to further enhance economic security as well as civil level exchanges between Korea and the ASEAN nations. Now to discuss more about the joint statement as well as on what we can expect from today's joint announcement, let's bring in Dr. An Jun Sung, adjunct professor of Yonsei University's Graduate School of International Studies. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Now we just heard that the, the uh, joint press statement that is set to be delivered by President Moon mm -hmm. as well as Thai Prime Minister Prayut chan -ocha, was set to begin exactly at 3 p.m. Korea time, but that has been delivered for about 10 minutes. So we have about 10 minutes to spare. So I'd like to ask you some questions regarding this yep. year's commemorative summit. Now the main sessions of the ASEAN Korea summit came to a close with the adoption of the joint vision statement. And I hear there were two kinds of statements that were adopted, the joint vision statement and just joint statement. Could yep. you first uh, tell us what the differences are of those two statements adopted. Yeah, there's one like a joint statement and then one is the joint vision statement. And as you can see, the one is with the vision, the other one, is, uh, uh, the other one with this uh, substance, how, how they detail do it. And if you actually check, uh, look it up, uh, what they said in the, in the text, if you compare the full text, it's not a big difference, but there's something missing on actually, uh, there's something more uh, included in the uh, joint statement. Could you walk us through the key points of the joint statement? Yeah, a joint statement uh, include, uh, include about 43 paragraphs and is into subdivided into four sections actually. And if you see there first was the political cooperation and economic cooperation and social cooperation. The last part is the the regional issues, uh, which uh, raise me, uh, ring me a bell to that issues because the, at that paragraph have a three, you know, you know uh, at, uh, there are three paragraphs. First one is to talk about North Korean issue and specific specifically uh, name Kim Jong-un <laughs> about how we do it about the North Korea issues. And second one is about the uh, denuclearization and the peace process in Korea, such as that uh, President Moon Jae-in tried to get, uh, make the uh, DMG as the international you know, peace zone, right? That's kind of things that they try to get uh, assistance from the ASEAN members to get international you know, support from that uh, specific region. And the last one is still about something, uh, I guess that's what ASEAN want from this summit, actually. It's a little bit surprising to see that. And they talk about the South China Sea issue, Right, and because that there would be, as you know, that there would be a series of international territorial dispute between China and ASEAN member states, such as Philippines and Vietnam, it's a very serious situation. So in uh, looking at the joint statement, uh, and then the, the last paragraph of the joint statement, right, the 43rd paragraph, actually, and it is specifically, you know, saying that uh, we'll support, I mean, it's not really saying we'll support ASEAN position, but they seems like it's indirectly supporting ASEAN position on that dispute issue. 
So the joint statement regarding security issues mm -hmm. not only discusses about the inter-Korean issues, the, mm -hmm. the security issues surrounding the Korean Peninsula, but as well as uh, the security like conflict. The Asian community. Security <laughs> issues uh, among the ASEAN member yeah, nations right. as well. Not only ASEAN, yeah. Right. Actually, I mean, the President Moon Jae-in talked about, I think one of the key, uh, maybe two key terms he used, kept using it for the ASEAN you know, the meeting is like, one is the, uh, it's the Asian community and Asian spirit, right? But obviously there's some issues, you know, maybe the Chinese government and North Korean government wouldn't like it about that issue because they're kind of uh, out of the, you know, you know, the boundary at this time. Right? Well, also today, a startup summit was held and uh, various uh, showcases were displayed today and continuing on with the Korea, ASEAN Korea, ASEAN ROK CEO summit that took place uh, yesterday. Do you think these kind of uh, economic summits could lead to pragmatic uh, economic deals between Korea and ASEAN nations? Yes, uh, in, in a way, but uh, well, actually it depends by case by case, by case. And, and especially ASEAN consists of 10 countries and each country have really different you know, situation economically and politically, right? So it's, you have to look at a big picture, or two, two different perspectives. First is big picture as ASEAN, how you know, approach it. And if you do that about the, if you want to do actual investment as a small business and company, maybe you want to go, go for, look, look at into the details actually, country by country actually. So if the company is interested in a specific country, maybe they focus on that country rather than ASEAN itself. Because ASEAN is not like the EU, right? It's not, they don't have any federal jurisdiction to you know, implement kind of regulation. So it's more like uh, when, actual com when, when, it, when it comes to investment, actual investment, especially for the you know, small companies, and it should be focused on individual countries. And I think the good side is that some certain countries, certain members in ASEAN maybe, if you got some, uh, like the way system work, if you send some, you know, relative speaking is more centralized than other Western countries. So if you have a good you know, feedback from the, you know, higher level officers, maybe it's a good sign for you, but doesn't really guarantee your success, but it will help you to get into the market more, more smoothly, right? Now, President Moon Jae-in uh, held numerous, a series of summit talks with ASEAN leaders yesterday mm -hmm. and today. And yesterday he held uh, uh, a South Korea-Philippine summit was held where they agreed to make efforts to sign bilateral FTA by next year, mm -hmm. sometime next year. Do you think that could be likely? Well, I mean, you know, before you do FTA negotiation, you have to go through like many series of, you know, uh, you know, series of you know preparation. Actually, there's a you know, preparation. We'll sometimes takes like a year or more. Actually, so that means that when the uh, the leader is saying we'll try to do FTA negotiation, means that they will start the joint study on how it works and how you know if you know have impact study about it. So it will take like a you know few time actually some time to actually start the negotiation itself. Right. And uh, staying with uh, the economic cooperation between Korea and ASEAN nations. What are the highlights of South Korea-Indonesia Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, or SEPA, that was agreed yesterday? Uh, right, uh, but Indonesia is right. The, um, you have to look at it here. Indonesia is one of the biggest countries, I mean, in terms of population, also the natural resources, right? That's really, I mean, it's kind of balancing. The South Korea have the, you know, you know, the very strong human, you know, you know, capacity, the, the you know skills and technology, you know, advancement. Also, but however, the, the other side, like like other countries, you know, Indonesia is very have potential and natural resources. So it's kind of combining uh, both country like strengths of both country will help it. SEPA will help that prospect. But however, you have to look at the. Um, it, it's not only SEPA because there's a. ASEAN FTA also, right? So you have to look at, it's a little bit complicated because it's like a multilateral already. You have ASEAN FTA and there's individual FTA, like a Korea, Singapore FTA. So that's kind of a little bit complication. So it, what happened was if you go multilateral negotiation, it's gonna be the level of uh, open market opening score because you need to get consensus on all members, right? But if you're a bilateral like a SEPA, maybe it help. But I think that the SEPA was not really Comprehensive negotiations. So I, I think that's only limited on the products. So and, and, and I believe that's excluding like some sensitive area as well, like you know, some you know some agriculture, right? So, but however, in some areas that can you know cooperate together more, making more better uh, situation. I think that's the point of the cooperation. Now, as you've mentioned, Korea has signed an FTA with ASEAN in 2006. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Korea is now seeking to sign bilateral FTAs with each ASEAN individual yeah. nations. Why, could you tell us why we need 
individual FDAs, bilateral FDAs with uh, each ASEAN nations when we already have Korea ASEAN FDA? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. So it's like, uh, why do you need a double tier issue, right? Because that multilateral negotiation means that uh, the problem about the multilateral negotiation is like about the uh, consensus have to be, all members have to you know, agree on some specific issues, which is quite difficult, right, in reality, right, because each country has different position on specific matters. So what happened was that uh, multilateral, when you try to get multilateral, like a double tier issue, what they try to do, they try to find common ground, you know, common denominator for all, among all members, which is quite, quite difficult. Although they find some common denominator, what they do next is that they have to find something, every, some level of agreement that all, party, all members will agree, which is not, end up with maybe relatively lower than what they expected in the beginning, right? So when you get a bilateral is that try to get, just like uh, try to get more market opening it individually. So multilateral is more like, uh, more like, uh, uh, just begin, I said beginner, beginning, you know, speaking some, starting something, and the bilateral means actually actual program, I mean, a progressive opening to the market, the specific market, in one by one. Now, before we move on with further questions, uh, Dr. An, I'd like to once again remind our viewers, for, for those of you who have just joined us, we are now awaiting for the 2019 ASEAN-Korea Commemorative Summit Joint Press Statement that is expected to be delivered by President Moon Jae-in and uh, Prime Minister of uh, Thailand, Prayut Chan-o-cha. Uh, he will be speaking on behalf of all ASEAN nations as Thailand is the chair of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations for this year. The joint press statement was originally scheduled to begin exactly at 3 p.m. Korea time, but we are now seeing some delay and it's expected to be delayed for about 20 to 25 minutes for some causes that Arirang can't individually verify yet. So while we're waiting for that, let's continue on with the questions, an in-depth discussion on Korea ASEAN matters with Dr. An Jun Song. Now, staying with the economic cooperation between Korea and ASEAN, it's been 13 years since Korea signed FTA with ASEAN, since the signing of Korea ASEAN mm -hmm. FTA. Yeah. Have you, what kind of changes have you witnessed? Do you think the deal truly led to mutual benefits for Korea and the ASEAN nations? Well, actually, the um the uh, Korea ASEAN FTA uh, is one of the uh, big, you know, multilateral negotiation. Korea, uh, Korean government had it, and that, in a way, that uh, as I discussed, uh, t t uh, mentioned earlier, that the is, when it become multilateral F FTA, and you have to be, you know, the market opening level is much lower, relatively speaking, because that the all members have to agree, right? So. I think, I think that, well, I can't really recall all the individual sector by sector analysis, but uh, what I see is that uh, it will send a message like uh, this, like a South Korean uh, exporters, right? And when they get into their market, there will be uh, favor treatment compared to other like Chinese product or Japanese product. Same thing with the uh, uh, ASEAN product coming to Korean market, oh, they will get a you know, favor like, uh, you know, favorite uh, tariff rate and so, such as, so that will be a help for each other, right? But the, I see that those 10 countries have all different <laughs> natural product and product, not only product, you know. So it's, uh, it's hard to say which one, is, which one is, you know, doing better in specific, you know, item, but I think that's, that's you know, greater um, prosperity for both sides because that they, the both country product will treat uh, uh, more favorably than our other non-FTA trade, you know, FTA country products. So that's, I think, the beginning point, but either it's benefiting each other. And then they also, once again, so since now they're working on the bilateral with the bilateral FTA with the Philippines, Indonesia, they will try to really open up their market to the market on both sides, right? So I think that's the expan expansion of the idea. And one of the things that is different from the Korea US FTA is uh, yeah, because very, you know, it's competitive, very, very competitive because either side try to get the other side, you know, back backdoor or something. But uh, I think the other the ASEAN, Korean ASEAN, and then other the ASEAN country member FTA with Korea is not, it's more like mutual beneficial point. Something that I really try to kill each other. It's more like uh, they try to, how can you maximize the benefit for both sides? So they try to avoid something very sensitive area in, in, in a mutual basis. 
Now, it's already been about two years since President Moon Jae-in first declared his new southern mm -hmm. policy. Yeah. And we are the, the hearing a lot about that policy. So obviously, uh, people, many people here in Korea are quite familiar with the policy. But for our viewers who may not be so familiar with that policy, could you once again explain to us what his new southern policy is? Yes, uh, actually right, it's November, November 2017, right? I think it, the President Moon Jae-in first uh, talked about the uh, new policy, new southern policy, and which make, basically targeting the uh, like Southeast Asia, the ASEAN plus India. Some, some countries we kind of geographically far away, relatively speaking, it's different, much far away from you know, ch China or, you know, you know, or even Russia, right? Or the Japan. So, and then plus there were some international issues. So, so South Korea having so international politics or problem with the big superpowers, US, we have some Jisomia issue with US and we have uh, Japan also, right? China, we still have some other, other issues from you know, the missile issue, right? So there, in, the, in, in, the, in the kind of a geopolitical location of a South Korea, and I, I, I guess the President Moon Jae-in tried to find breakthrough to how to you know, go forward in, in, within the you know, situation, so I guess he come up with the idea of a new South, South, Southern policy, saying let's cooperate with, let's increase the level of cooperation with Southeastern Asian countries, so that we can you know mutually benefit each other. And uh, traditionally, Southeastern Asian countries, uh, it's not much politically oriented. They are not really political, and they're just you know kind of bilateral. Also, and see that ten members of ASEAN countries all have a uh, uh, politi I mean the the. The diplomatic tie, I mean, different relations, formal relations with North Korea. That's the seems they are very neutral in this situation. Also, we see that the uh, two of countries, you know, as a member country hosted North Korea and U.S., you know, some meeting, right, some meeting or negotiation, right. So you know, Vietnam and Singapore. That shows that there are neutral forum for the uh, Korean issues, right. I think that's the uh, sending a good sign to the Korean government as well. Now, speaking of security issues, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has been invited by President Moon Jae-in to attend to come uh, cross the border down to the south and perhaps attend this uh, ASEAN-Korea commemorative summit. But uh, not it wasn't surprising, but Kim Jong-un turned down the offer. He did not attend this summit, saying that North Korea could not find any reason to, to make the visit, to come down to South Korea and visit the summit. And instead, North Korean leader uh, uh, inspected fire drills just mm -hmm. yesterday or the day before, if I'm right. 23rd, yeah, 23rd, right. Why? What, 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 is, uh, what, what is on his mind at the moment when, when South Korea is hosting this global, uh, this big global event? Why did Kim Jong-un have to go and inspect a fire drill? Actually, uh, the, from Kim Jong perspective, I think the domestic issue, right? And then it was there December, uh, November twenty third, twenty third, and there are like you know, you know, let's say military exercise, you know, state they would call it a military exercise. They're using the artillery to attack. I mean, exercise, and then we're not sure which direction they drift, but. The problem was the day of the, his visit was the ninth anniversary of you know the Yongpyeong bombardment, right? So that to them is kind of a kind of a historic, more significant to them in a military way. So I guess uh, he wanna, he didn't want to miss the opportunity to you know raise his reputation or you know recognition in North Korea, you know, in the public, right? Uh, but however, the problem was that I think he tried to send a message to South Korea because he turned down the offer to visit an you know, invitation offer from you know, Professor Moon Jae-in. Uh, I guess the, what he's trying to say is that he want to say, basically, g give me what I want, not what you want to give me, right? <laughs> basically, uh, what I want, I, I guess I mean, he, the reason he didn't show up uh, because that he want to really uh, finish the negotiation with the US government. You know, to, you know, his top priority by end of this year, so that he can just move on to focus on other issues. I'm sure there are so many issues in North Korea as well, political, not only political issues. So he wanted to prioritize the uh, U U.S. Uh, North Korea uh, bilateral relations, and you know, to normalize it some some way, so that he can just do some other focus on other issues. And but it didn't work out that way. And since the Trump is not coming, so I guess he he doesn't have much incentive to come here because that there's nothing he can you know celebrate here. You know, just showing up here. Uh, with the uh, 10 members, they're all the um, not hostile country as we. Well. So I guess that he tried to become more practical in a sense that um, maybe he, if he, will come, he, he go to somewhere, uh, he want to get something, practical gain. But for the ASEAN, uh, ASEAN forum here, uh, a summit wasn't really giving him any, any you know, you know, 
you know, any advantage to him. Right. And obviously, it was a way uh, of Kim Jong Un showing his discontent towards South Korea, the South Korean government amid stalled Pyongyang Washington nuclear negotiations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, going back to President Moon's new southern policy, do you think the policy yielded pragmatic results over the last two years? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, you see that, uh, in a way, like, so they, I think they call it like 2.0, version 2.0. It's to say first stage, uh, last two years, uh, preparation. And now it's like they're saying, the, you know, I think Blue House called it like 2.0. The like second phrase is, you know, can I get us some fruit on it? So basically what they're trying to say, well, at least they just, you know, this, this uh, international affair, I mean, international event is the, the, the largest, right, multilateral gathering under the Moon Jae-in administration. So I guess they kind of celebrating by themselves. Oh, the biggest one we have. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just thinks, you know, it's, right to, it's good to be uh, Congress, right? Uh, it's a good sign they uh, getting, a, you know, building a strong, stronger relations with other countries. Uh, although there's, you know, as, as it doesn't matter where actually from, and there's a stronger support from international community. That's the good sign. I think that's the good beginning for the, you know, you know following years. Right? So security is also one of the very uh, important uh, sector that is grabbing much attention besides the economic cooperation between Korea and the ASEAN nations. And speaking of security issues, it has been 25 years since the ARF, the, ARF, mm -hmm. the Asian Regional Forum, yeah. was formed. Do you think the importance of ASEAN nations grew over the past 25 years with the uh, evolving dynamics of regional affairs. Yeah, but you know, think about this, uh, two, two ways, right? Two sides. Uh, maybe, yeah, yeah, that's true that their, their significance or their environment, international environment of the ARF is growing, yes. Uh, however, you, the other side is, is, as I talked about it earlier today, is about the, you know, South China Sea issue like dispute. If you get stronger, it means that you have more dispute because you have speaking speaking out some issues, and there will be the conflict because that if you speak out over one position, there will be the other side who will then complain as well. Right? So I guess that um, there, uh, uh, traditionally ASEAN members in kind of a politically neutral way, but as the ASEAN community, they have uh, their speaking uh, speaking in one voice such as some ter territorial issue. Uh, with the dispute with China, for example, they will be get together, right, to get speaking one voice. Just, and then they also, you know, we talk about joint statement, the last paragraph, their joint statement also included a specific mention of us, you know, South China Sea you know, dispute issue, and they want uh, uh, support from, you know, former support from South, South, China, uh, South Korean government, right? So I guess that's the uh, you know, two, two sides issues. What kind of role can ASEAN nations play in building peace, especially on the Korean Peninsula? Yeah, well, actually, we just, yeah. Well, we talk about the issue, they're relatively neutral forum. And second, they already approved, you know, approved the international community that they, you know, have been you know, hosting country for the first and second U.S., North Korea, you know, the negotiation, right? That's the one of the good point, right? Sorry, we will have to stop you there. The joint statement is about to begin. Let's listen in. Now we will begin the 2019 ASEAN ROK Commemorative Summit, the joint statement. First of all, we will invite President Moon Jae-in for his speech. And next, Prime Minister Prayut O-chan of Thailand will speak. The ASEAN-Korea Commemorative Summit has come to a successful end. I extend my deepest gratitude to all leaders of the ASEAN member states. The colder it is, the warmer can we feel the warmth of our friends. Thanks to Prime Minister uh, Prayut of Thailand, I felt ever more reassured throughout the meetings. I would like to extend my uh, special thanks to Co-Chair Prime Minister Prayut of Thailand. ASEAN's development is, in fact, the development of the Republic of Korea. We have collaborated based on a friendship and trust during the past 30 years and have showcased to the world the potential of Asia by overcoming the global financial crisis and the East Asian financial crisis. Now we have the confidence that we can suggest new answers to the global future with our spirit of Asia valuing sharing and inclusiveness. During today's meeting, 
we, the heads of state and government, agreed to usher in an era of peace and prosperity in East Asia through Asian cooperation and have affirmed on the following future blueprints. First of all, we agreed to materialize people-centered community by expanding people-to-people -people and cultural exchange between ASEAN and South Korea. People are the beginning of all relations. In order to further expand people-to-people -people exchanges between ASEAN and South Korea, which now amount to 11 million, we agreed to improve diverse mechanisms, including streamlining the visa scheme and freedom of navigation in and over flight. South Korea will also increase the scholarship to ASEAN students by over two folds and contribute to nurturing the future talents of ASEAN member states. Active cultural exchange is also crucial for establishing ASEAN-South Korea friendship ties. The ASEAN Culture House, located here in Busan, will strengthen its cooperation with Thailand ASEAN Culture Center, and we expect to facilitate more active cultural exchange between ASEAN and South Korea. During the meeting, ASEAN has assessed the efforts put forth by South Korea to develop digital contents for Asia, uh, ASEAN cultural heritage. And Korea agreed to intensify cooperation to enhance Korean language education in the ASEAN region. There are over 600,000 ASEAN citizens residing in South Korea. My administration will help enhance the convenience of them, and we will pay more attention and support them earnestly so that they can grow as a member of our community. In order to protect uh, and support Korean citizens living in ASEAN, we will also cooperate closely with each member state to materialize the value of coexistence. Secondly, South Korea and ASEAN will move towards an innovative community of co-prosperity based on free trade. Against increasing concerns on global trade protectionism, we have reaffirmed that free trade is the path towards co-prosperity. We welcome the conclusion of the RCEP and agreed to protect the value of free trade based on the Korea ASEAN FTA. We will jointly usher in the era of fourth industrial revolution. We will establish in ASEAN a science and technology cooperation center as well as other cooperation centers in the areas of standardization and industrial innovation and strengthen our startup partnership. Increasing ASEAN connectivity is crucial for the sustainable uh, prosperity for South Korea and ASEAN. To implement the master plan on ASEAN connectivity 2025, we agreed to intensify cooperation in areas of infrastructure, smart city, finance and environment. South Korea will double Korea ASEAN cooperation fund this year and expand our ODA towards new southern regions by over two folds by 2022. We will intensify development cooperation in various areas, including higher education, rural development, transportation, public administration, utilizing Korea's outstanding digital technology. Thirdly, we agreed to cooperate even closer to materialize a peaceful East Asia community. We, the heads of state and government, share the same view that the peace and stability in Southeast Asia is linked with, amongst others, that the Northeast Asia, including the North Korean Peninsula, and agree to intensify cooperation to establish regional peace. South Korea welcomes the ASEAN perspective for Indian and Pacific Oceans, announced by ASEAN member states in June, and we will continue with our regional cooperation based on ASEAN centrality. ASEAN also agreed to cooperate for peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula by utilizing ASEAN Red Regional Mechanisms, including IARF, in order to achieve complete denuclearization and eternal peace on the Korean Peninsula. In particular, ASEAN also expressed support for the my administration's goal of establishing the DMZ into a global peace zone, and we discussed specific measures, including joint liaison offices. We also agreed to intensify cooperation to tackle increasing non-conventional security threats, including terrorism, transnational crimes, cybersecurity, natural disasters, 
and climate change and marine waste. We welcome the ASEAN-Korea ministerial meeting on transnational crime to be newly launched this year and will continue to carry out cooperation to strengthen our capacity in non-conventional security. Just like the slogan of this year's meeting, Partnership for Peace, Prosperity for People, Korea and ASEAN will together make a more abundant and peaceful future. Today, ASEAN and South Korea adopt the ASEAN ROK Joint Vision Statement for Peace, Prosperity and Partnership, as well as the co-chair's statement. I hope they will be wonderful mileposts for the future of people, co-prosperity and peace for South Korea and ASEAN. Once again, I extend my deepest gratitude to the dis dis distinguished leaders of ASEAN for your participation in the ASEAN-Korea Commemorative Summit. The wisdom of Asia shared in the cold winter will bring a warmth to Asia as well as the entire humanity. Thank you very much. Friends from the media, distinguished guests, and Yong Hashimnika, it is my honor to serve as co-chair with President Moon at the third ASEAN ROK Commemorative Summit here in Busan. I'd like to congratulate the President and the ROK for the excellent hosting of this summit, which has strengthened the ASEAN ROK strategic partnership and promoted peace, stability, prosperity, and sustainability in our region. The third ASEAN ROK Commemorative Summit was a great success. We discussed ways to further strengthen our relations, as well as key regional issues. This included implementation of President Moon's New Southern Policy, which resonates with the ASEAN Community Vision 2025, and in particular Thailand's ASEAN Chairmanship theme, Advancing Partnership for Sustainability, that is meant to help create an ASEAN community that is people-centered, leaves no one behind, looks to the future, and promotes sustainability in all dimensions. We jointly adopted the ASEAN ROK vision statement for peace, prosperity, and partnership to craft a collective approach with regard to the future direction of our relations. And we appreciate the ROK's support for the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific or the AOIP. Today, I wish to present to you four sets of words that I believe summarize the key outcomes of the summit. First, greater and closer ties. We have committed to deepening our strategic partnership on three key issues. The first being sustainable security and human security. Here, we seek to maintain and enhance peace and stability to enable our region to address challenges in a, an effective manner. The second key issue is economic sustainability. We strive to support cooperation in areas of strength for each side, such as green economic growth, human capital development, and the ASEAN Smart Cities Network. The third is socio-cultural sustainability. We welcome the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between the ASEAN Cultural Center in Bangkok and the one in Busan. This should lead to increased cultural understanding amongst our peoples. It also coincides with ASEAN's Cultural Year 2019. In addition, we seek to promote sustainable development by supporting the ASEAN Center for Sustainable Development Studies and Dialogue in Thailand. The second set of words is greater connectivity and sustainability. We agree to promote connectivity based on our close partnership, which will lead to prosperity and sustainability in all dimensions. We highlighted three key elements as, fa as follows, providing greater economic co opportunities for an economic system that is resilient, innovative, and beneficial for all. We welcome the conclusion of text-based negotiations for all 20 chapters of RCEP by 15 RCEP members earlier this month in Thailand with a view to signing the agreement in 2020. The second key element is enhancing connectivity based on partnership and synergies. Here, we strive to promote the connecting the connectivities approach at both the regional and sub-regional levels, such as through the ASEAN Master Plan on ASEAN Connectivity 
2025, the New Southern Policy of Korea, ACMEX, and the Mekong ROK cooperation. And third is minimizing the negative impacts of enhanced connectivity, whether they be transnational crime, illegal smuggling, or cyber threats. The third set of words is greater security. We agreed to address regional and global issues by making use of a resilient regional ar architecture based on ASEAN centrality. The common issue of priority for both sides is the situation in the Korean Peninsula. We support the important and constructive role of the ROK. ASEAN stressed the importance of dialogue among all concerned parties to realize lasting peace and stability in a denuclearized Korean Peninsula. And thus, we welcomed President Moon's commitment and vision with a view to establishing lasting peace and stability on a denuclearized Korean peninsula. Thus, we hope that all concerned parties will fully implement all relevant UNSC resolutions, as well as other relevant agreements. ASEAN stands ready to provide ASEAN-led platforms, especially the ARF, to facilitate the peaceful efforts of relevant parties to promote peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula and promote stability in the Asia-Pacific sustainably. Fourth is greater inclusiveness through supporting increase and more wide-ranging cooperation regarding the bilateral relations between Thailand and the ROK. It was my great honor to, have to welcome President Moon to Thailand twice in September and November. On the 25th of November, we held a bilateral meeting here in Busan. We witnessed the signing of three memoranda of understanding on the Eastern Economic Corridor, or the EEC, cooperation in science, technology, and innovation, and on cooperation in the exchange of labor information. These MOUs will help contribute to closer and more comprehensive bilateral relations. The Korean proverb that there is nothing on this earth more to be prized than true friendship, portrays fittingly the precious friendship between ASEAN and the ROK over the past 30 years. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the peoples of the ROK and ASEAN for jointly laying down a solid foundation for this friendship. And it is now time for us to build upon our precious friendship, making it an even more tight-knit one at all levels, especially amongst our people who are at the heart of the ASEAN community and ASEAN ROK dialogue relations. Last but not least, on behalf of ASEAN, I wish to once again thank the Republic of Korea for the excellent hosting of this summit and the warm hospitality to all ASEAN member states. Also, I wish to thank all involved in making the summit such a great success as per the objectives that were set. Thank you very much. Kamsa Hamnida. Well, there we have it. That was a joint press statement of this year's ASEAN-Korea Commemorative Summit delivered by President Moon Jae-in and Prime Minister of Thailand, this year's ASEAN Chair, Prayut Chanocha. An ASEAN-Korea joint vision statement was also unveiled earlier today in which the two sides once again reaffirmed the need to boost cooperation, not only in the economic sector, but in other various fields as well. Now, for more discussion, we're once again joined by Dr. An Jun Sung of Yonsei University's Graduate School of International Studies. Now, could you walk us through the key points made during the press uh, joint press statement just now before you go? Yeah, I think first thing is that the uh, President Moon Jae-in, also the uh, Prime Minister of you know, Thailand, I know, uh, touched on the issue about two booster human relations, you know, you know booster relations between both, you know both you know, country, um, countries, right, and, and South Korea and then ASEAN. Also, they talk about this, uh, President Moon Jae-in talk about the kind of promise to double the uh, Korea ASEAN fund uh, this year, and then also to double the size of the ODA uh, for the uh, new southern e areas, right? So I think that's sending a, you know, very kind of a, you know, good message to the uh, you know, Asian partners. Well, I'd like to ask you much more questions, but I'm afraid we are running out of time. Thank you, Dr. An, for your perspective. Yes, thank you.
And that does it for this special edition of Arirang News on the ASEAN-Korea Joint Press Statement. Keep you tuned to Arirang for more updates on the ASEAN-Korea Commemorative Summit and more as we will be bringing you stories straight from the scene as they develop. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.